live. Nobody on yet. Barb says I'm on. Ha ha. <laughs> What's up, Auntie Bob? <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome. Another show. Anyone can cook. Yes, we're back at it. This edition is the farmer's edition. So we went to the local farms. Bro, we went to the farmer's market. We're not going to no farms. We don't have time for that. Plus, they probably wouldn't let me in. They said, you look like a goat with all this beard on. Anyway, <laughs> we have a special, special episode of Anyone Can Cook because we're coming straight from the local farmer's market. What we're gonna introduce right now is some of the stuff that I picked out. These are from yesterday. By the way, local farms are a hundred, I wanna say a hundred miles vicinity inside of Illinois. And so let's go down the line and see what I got. And we're gonna cook today. So we have some beet talks which came from some beets right here we have purple beets we have golden beets we have some king trumpet mushrooms over here we have some baby eggplants we have some corn we have some broccolini these are so fresh you still got the flowers on them you got some peaches you have some uh, striped zucchini we have some green kale we have some purple kale. What else we got? We also have some huevos. I got some fresh eggs. Hey, don't buy, you know, I won't say don't buy, but these costs a grip. So everything you see right here is fresh from the market, except for these little tidbits right here. But we're gonna explain what we have today. For today, we have the summer succotash salad. Succotash is basically, uh, basically a mixture of hot ingredients. Uh, mainly corn, mainly um, okra, tomato, they're mainly from down south. So for this succotash, I call it a summer succotash. We have baby eggplant, king trumpets, we have broccoli, no not broccoli, save that for something else. We have zucchini and we have corn and a little bit of onion, can't forget some onion. Uh, we also have a roasted beet salad. The roasted beets are going to be red and gold, as you can see right here. We have some special goat cheese over here. This is fresh, fresh goat cheese. Got a nice funk to it. So we're going to put some funk on these salads today. Uh, we also have some <laughs> green kale, broccolini, and of course the beet greens. So let's get busy. Let's get busy. What we're going to do first is we're going to go to the pickled peaches. So, I like peaches, you can roast them, you can saute them, they're very versatile. But why am I pickling them? It's because I want to give different texture to the salads than just putting tomatoes, cucumber, olive. It's doing something totally different. So it's gonna talk about textures today. So this texture is pickled. So it's not quite cooked, but it's highly flavorful. So with that, I'm gonna have, I have some water boiling here. And of course, I got that specialty, that goat pepper. Goat pepper vinegar. You can use white wine vinegar, but we just wanna spice this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a tad bit to this. 
And what's that in the pot? That's just normal water. Okay. Water, goat pepper, and then I have some special seasoning, which is my pickling spices right here. We have fresh cinnamon, we have some mustard seeds, a little bit of ginger, uh, coriander, and cloves. So I'm gonna throw this in here. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of honey in there because I, don't, I want a little bit of sweet. I don't want it too, too strong, too, too peppery, too, too spiced up, just a little bit of honey. Sometimes you can use white sugar or brown sugar, but hey, you're doing it healthy, right? So once that comes up to a boil, and this is so aromatic. I think I did this before with you guys. So right now, this is nice and hot. I'm just gonna go ahead and have some sliced peaches. I'm just gonna add that in there, okay? I'm gonna let that just swim in there. I like that term. I'm just gonna let it swim for a minute. Yeah, and this is gonna be your pickled peaches. I'm gonna let this sit here for about two to three minutes, and then we're gonna put that on some ice. So, you know, as a chef, sometimes you do things at the last minute. And I say, I, I told myself, self, you have broccolini. Self, what are you gonna do with the broccolini? We're gonna do it raw. Why? Because certain vegetables they give you more nutrients when they're raw, okay? Uh, broccoli is one of them. Certain vegetables give you more nutrients when they're cooked, like corn. But this corn is so fresh, you can actually eat it raw and it's sweet. So I'm gonna take some of these, just take probably like one branch, maybe two, of this broccolini, and we're gonna make a quick puree. Now this wasn't on the menu, but hey, I felt the need to do a little something different. So I got a little bit of oil in this pan right here. This is olive oil. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion. And this right here. Just gonna chop that up like so. Now, for those that don't know what broccolini is, can you explain? Broccoli, broccolini is a flower. It's a flowering plant. Similar to broccoli, I would call it broccoli's little cousin, you know, like tortle and tortellini. I'm just playing, I know tortle. But broccolini is a similar plant, and it's a vegetable, of course, but it's a flowering vegetable. Just like broccoli. Broccoli is a flowering vegetable. So I'm gonna add that to that, like right so. And since this burn is more hot, I'm gonna put that on here. And so these, these peaches, and look here, this smells so good. How long are we cooking the peaches? One more minute, then I'm taking it out, I'm gonna put it in the ice bath. So about five minutes total? About five minutes total. Okay. Smells good already. What well, smells good? Everything or that's me? <laughs> All right, so I have my ice bath ready. Indeed. So I'm gonna place those pickled, I mean these pickled peaches. I'm take that off. This is almost good because I don't want it cooked too much. I just want it cooked just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid to it. And this is just plain water. You can add vegetable stock, but you can just call this for the sake of it, we can call it broccolini hummus. <laughs> even, doesn't, even though it doesn't have any uh, chickpeas in it, it's all about the name. Okay, it's just salt and pepper. Just a little salt and pepper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of basil just to spice it up a little bit.
this is about it. I only wanted to cook a little bit because the main thing about certain vegetables, like I said, broccoli, I don't want to cook it till it's mush. That's one of the issues that I have with cooking vegetables. I think Asians are like the epitome of best vegetable yes. cookery because they cook their vegetables to crispiness, to an al dente. And that's what I'm going to do with this right here. I want to cook it just till it's crisp. Like I said, the more you cook it, the more you lose the nutrients. Um, and like I said, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, basil to it, just for a little perfume, but not too much. These vegetables are fresh from the market and they are absolutely tasty. You can eat everything here raw, okay? So let's puree that up right quick. So, we're gonna puree this up right quick. My little mini mini here. Anybody have a mini me? You should get one. Just a little bit. Then I'm gonna add some basil to that. Some fresh basil. And hey, listen, if you don't grow anything out of your yard or in your living room like I do, grow some basil. This is fresh. This is lovely. It goes a long way. And to this, I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. And that's okay if you want it chunky, we can leave it chunky. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. And this is it. We don't want too much. We just want a little base. Just like a little puree, okay? Gotta add a little bit more oil so it emulsifies. Just a little bit more. And for the lay people out there, emulsify. What is emulsify. that? Emulsify. Oh my god. Going back to culinary school. <laughs> emulsify or emulsification is the binding. That means you connecting fat and water in the sense that it doesn't separate. So this is done. We're gonna cool this down also. Peggy wants to know why are you teasing her while she's at work? <laughs> oh my, Peggy. Peggy, you should be working, not watching. <laughs> Just kidding. So Peggy, this is healthy. Healthy, quick, and this is our little broccoli. You can call it emulsification. You can call it um, broccoli puree. I like to call it the broccoli hummus, just because it sounds fancy. All right. <laughs> so next, for our salads, we talk about different flavors. And so one of the flavors and textures I want to talk about spicy is granola. I like granola. Sometimes you might get seeds on your, you might get different seeds on your um, on your salad. So, one of my favorite seeds, I think I'm like, I'm going crazy over it. Last week I did a quinoa fried rice. Man, I think quinoa is, I don't think I'm gonna even eat rice anymore. Quinoa, superfood, has all the nine amino acids that your body needs. You wanna stay nice like me. Well, not nice, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so I have a buddy, quick story, I have a buddy, and uh, one of my schoolmates, he said, hey Jeff, you ain't got no bread in your bed, you dying today. I'm like, no, this is regular. I have no, no, uh, what you call it, just for me? None of that, uh, just, for man. just for man, no man, this is regular. By the way, I need to shape up, Sean, I need to holler at you, all right? So we gotta do this quick. We have uh, our granola. And so when we think about granola, we think about oatmeal. We think about dried fruits. We think about 
or some type of liquid. We're gonna do this super, super simple, super, super easy. First thing, I have a hot pan. So what I'm gonna do is, I have some flax seeds here, I have some chia seeds here, and I also have some quinoa in here. Yeah? So, I'm just gonna toast this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna toast it by itself, so it brings out all the oils, just for a couple seconds, not too long. Yeah? All right. While that's going, I'm gonna make some space because I have so much food here. My girls are gonna be happy with me. They'll be like, Daddy, you made food for us? Oh uh, yeah, what's new? So while that's toasting, I wanna to talk a little bit about um, where I got the food from, where I got these products from. So I got the products from... Is it Green City? No, Green City was closed. Oh, okay. I got it from uh, actually Ravenswood. Ravenswood. Ravenswood? Ravenswood. Ravenswood uh, Farmer's Market. Uh, I got it from Gray Farms, which is in Watseki, Illinois. And I got it from River Valley Ranch. Not the, not the dressing, not the salad <laughs> dressing, but River Valley Ranch. Um, and I also got the cheese from Stamper. Stamper, they have excellent, excellent stuff. So while this is toasting, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Yeah, I didn't say we were cooking straight vegan, so I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut oil. Mm, that smells good. And at this point, I'm gonna add my gonna add my oats and toast those also. Why not? And also, I'm gonna add some syrup, some maple syrup. I got some maple syrup from my aunt in Canada. My belle tante, she brought me some homemade maple syrup. If you ever get some maple syrup, make sure it's um, A grade or straight from Canada. So we're gonna put a little bit of, let this toast for a few more seconds. And this is so healthy right here. As a matter of fact, before I add that, I have some Ras Al Hanout. This is a mixture. I'm not, you know what? I'm not gonna even tell you. I'm gonna force you to go and watch my other last episode. It's on Facebook Live. It's on YouTube. It's the Rock and Moroccan episode. The Rock and Moroccan episode. Hey, somebody watched it. <laughs> Rock and Moroccan. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my honey. I mean my maple syrup. Oh man, that smells good. I wish you could smell this. Oh my gosh. And basically, this is how you make your granola. Let this cook for a little bit. Some people cook it in the oven for like an hour, 30 minutes. Listen, when you're a chef and you have hungry kids and a wife will look at you mean if you don't get it right the first time. You better cook quick. So why did you use uh, the Moroccan spices? I this? want the Moroccan spices because everything else that's going to play with this is going to be sweet. So I want it to be a little spicy. So this isn't the traditional it's granola. Not, it's not your traditional granola. It's a little spicier, but it's going to be cooked the same way. Okay. Cooked the same. All right. So, man, this smells good. So this is your spicy granola, and to this you can add you can add any dry fruit, you know, blueberries or even fresh fruits, but preferably dry. Blueberries, dates. So what I have here are some raisins and some dates. And of course you learned about dates last week. 
So this is just about, I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. Some people add liquids like juice to it. I'm not gonna do that. You have it nice and chunky. We're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna turn that off and let it go. It smells like a bakery in here. It smells like a bakery. So mix that in. And you said there are dates and... Dates and yellow and golden raisins. Nice. And folks, that's how you make your granola. You let this cool down. You could form it at any size. You could form it, you can leave it together if you want clump granola. But what I'm going to do is take this off so it doesn't continue to cook. You have that uh, latent residual heat. So, this is nice. It smells great. So, we have some beets here. The way I cook my beets, I put them in foil. I wrap them in a little bit of oil, some foil, wrap it, salt, pepper, any herbs you want to use, I, I like to use thyme, you can use oregano, anything that's in season, anything that you like. Um, salt, pepper, oil, 350, maybe an hour. When you take it out of the oven, you can peel it. And when you peel it, they turn out like this. So what I did is go ahead and just cut them up, and that's how they come out, just like that. So let's go to our tomato vinaigrette. Tomato vinaigrette, so we have, of course, tomatoes. A little bit of muta. Some people like to say uh, Dijon. Jeff didn't have no Dijon, Jeff had yellow mustard, so just add a little bit of yellow mustard to that. And this will be the emulsifier. That's a word we learned today. You do learn, where we learned today. A little uh, red wine vinegar. I mean, I'm sorry, apple cider. Oh, that is red wine. And a little bit of honey. Salt and pepper. Now, if you want to go ahead and make it more intense, you can cook the tomatoes. You're going to buzz this up first. oil to emulsify it. So I have a blend of virgin olive oil and soybean oil. should be ready. So when you're making a vinaigrette, it's one part vinegar, three parts oil. Yeah, and you to make sure it's nice and saucy. So, hmm, wait a minute. One for Jeff. That looks delicious. Let's go. We're cooking up in here today. So this right here is our tomato vinaigrette. I don't want it too fine. I have some lumps in there. That's fine with me. Now she says she can smell it. And so we have one vinaigrette made. So we're gonna make another vinaigrette. This is our chia or chaya. Do I say chaya? Do I say chia? Chia. Chia. Chaya, chia, tomato, tomato. So with that, we're gonna add our chia seeds. That's one vinaigrette. Did I tell you I'm making two salads? Yes, we're making a summer succotash and we're making a roasted beet salad. So for our chia vinaigrette, add your chia seeds, lemon juice. You can add a little bit of honey. And 
and a little bit of mustard. So I love using mustard with my vinaigrettes because it brings out a tang and also binds it, okay? So one way to make a vinaigrette, if you're all by yourself, one, two, three, put the cloth on the table, take your whisk. This is your emulsification right here. Now this one you didn't put in the blender, why not? I, I didn't put it in the blender because I want to show you how you make a vinaigrette. <laughs> a la main, that means by hand. So I'm just gonna slowly add in some oil. And why have the cloth under it? So it doesn't move, okay? So as I add more oil, it continues to emulsify, as you can see. So if I, if I was to continue adding oil, and if I had an egg in this, this would be a, a mayonnaise or an aioli. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil, because I don't want it too, too thick. I don't want a mayonnaise, I want a vinaigrette. As you can see, it starts to get thicker and thicker and thicker. So this is how you make a regular vinaigrette. And so of course we have to season it. A little salt, a little pepper. And with the chia seeds, as long as you continue to keep them in any liquid, they will start to thicken up. So later on we'll see how it starts to thicken up. Let's taste this. Wow, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have both vinaigrettes made in a matter of five minutes. One by machine, one by hand. So, we talked about succotash. Let's start with our succotash. So succotash, like I said, is a mixture of vegetables, okay? So we're gonna start off with a little bit of onions and some oil. And this is gonna cook quickly. We have a little bit of onions. We have some eggplant. And I'm gonna add all of these step one by one by one because they cook so quickly. You can even add the end too. All of it is edible, okay? I'm gonna add this king trumpet mushroom. Now, it's a funny thing that the mushroom and the uh, eggplant, they cook similarly almost the same because of their sponginess and their density, yeah? So I'm gonna go ahead and add that all in here. very aromatic. What's this that we're So adding? this is our zucchini. I'm gonna add that too. Just want a little bit of texture. Like I said, that's all we're looking for, some texture. Add a little oil to this. Mix it up a little bit. And this is gonna cook, like I said, in no time, all right? So as you can see, the mushrooms, they absorb a lot of oil and so do the eggplants. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. And at the end, we're gonna finish with some corn. So I like to eat eggs on everything. So I decided, okay, why not add an egg to our salad? So hey, that's what we're gonna do. So while this is cooking over here, mm, this is almost ready. Let me get a little bit of color.
So they said the quickest way to cook an egg is just put it in the pan. Let it cook by itself. So we're gonna make a sunny side up. Has anybody ever made a sunny side up before? One, two, three. Some people use butter, some people use oil. You don't want your pan too hot. What I do is I just crack it. Easy. Turn it off. By the time we come back to it, this will be ready. You don't even want too much heat on it. So, with our salads, oh, it's starting to get a little bit of color. It's starting to like it. A mushroom. Now, salad time. For our succotash, we have a red kale, which is right here. <laughs> and we're gonna use some purple cabbage with that. So we like to take off these ends. Now don't throw these away because you can always throw these in here, okay? Do not throw anything away. So you have your, your red. And sometimes people saute these, but like I said, today we're looking for texture. Yeah? Texture is the word for the day. Texture. Check texture, texture, texture. Oh, don't forget the corn. Last second. We have our fresh corn. We're gonna add those to our succotash. That residual heat. It's gonna be nice. Salt and pepper? No. No salt. No pepper. So let's make these salads. So all salads do not have to be cold. Indeed, we can make the lettuce cold, but the ingredients, just like you have a you have a, a Caesar salad with salmon. The salmon isn't cold unless you have smoked salmon. So we're gonna make this a succotash that is warm, like I said. So we're gonna add that. Add a little bit of red cabbage, nice color. And then we're gonna add this tomato vinaigrette. And this is almost like a slaw. But I don't want it too, too wet. But I want it wet enough that the red kale soaks up all the deliciousness of this vinaigrette. Yeah? So, when you're making a salad and you're making a mixed salad, always season it. Not salt bay, but we do this. <laughs> so, first plate up. You have your salad. And this is nice and crunchy. This isn't your normal wet iceberg. This isn't your typical romaine. No, man. This is love right here. This has so much love in it. What I'm going to do is just put it in the middle. And this is a hearty salad. So, you're not gonna need a second meal after this. Okay? This is a meal in itself. This is a meal in itself. So I'm gonna take some of those lovely vegetables we sauteed. And we're just gonna go over the top or the edge. We have eggplant. 
you have king trumpet mushrooms and you have two different uh textures you have a cold you have a cold temperature you have a warm temperature This isn't your average tomato panzanella salad. This isn't your average Mediterranean salad. This is a whole different level, folks. Call this a summer succotash. And what's going in the middle? You guessed it. Mr. Huevos. If you want to, you can make one more little drizzle. I like sauce. Wow, that looks beautiful. Summery, bright colors. Little tomatoes. I lie. You put a little tomato on it anyway. What's a salad without tomato, right? There we go. This is one salad. We're going to put that right here. I told you we make making two salads, right? That's one salad. Next one, let me change my gloves. And we're almost done. Thank you for tuning in. We're almost out of here. I know everybody has to go and watch their watch their soap operas, watch the news. Please don't watch the news right now. Oh, by the way, crunchy aspect. On your salads, you always want a crunchy aspect. And in this case, I had some chickpeas. I roasted them. Roast them with some turmeric. We eat superfoods, healthy foods. Double up. This is like, man, this is too much. Superfoods all day. Who said you can't eat healthy? Who said you can't eat healthy and fast? This is what we're doing here, folks. Put one there, put one there. Wow. Sometimes I even amaze myself. <laughs> So the next salad is a regular beef salad, but instead of being regular, you're going to use some real greens. A lot of times people don't use the greens from the salad, and that's where all the nutrients are. Yeah? Let me show you how you do this right quick. So we have some, as you can see, red. This is your red beet leaf, and this is your yellow one. These are so healthy, so many vitamins are in there. And you know what? It's better when it's eaten raw. So we're gonna add that up with a little bit of kale. I'm just gonna do a basic chop, not too small. Like I said, I want a little bit of texture. Christine said, Joshua said it looks delicious and he wants you to make some for him. <laughs> Tell yeah. Joshua I got him. Nasha wanted to know, did you use uh, the canned chickpeas? Yes, I did. Nice. You can use canned chickpeas. You know, as a matter of fact, next week we might do something from the can just to let you know that, hey, there are options from your pantry. I thought about doing some, uh, some salmon cakes today. My girl's like, salmon cakes? Really, daddy? I'm like, okay. So here we go. We have our green kale. We have our beets, our beet greens. Yeah, this is so healthy. I'm gonna add a little bit more beet green. Just tear those up like that. Now these take a lot of dressing. So you wanna go ahead and Dress them up real nice. So you, you're probably wondering what's up with all this green? Well, we already had a whole bunch of barbecue for the summer. Last week I had chicken. The week before that we had goat. So we're, we're cleansing right now. You know, next week we might fast. Fast with some goat. <laughs> So, this salad, we're going to put on this plate right here. But before we do that, don't forget, we have our beets. Don't forget, we have our broccoli. 
So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this broccoli. Let's put it straight down the middle. Broccolini. Broccolini puree. And then I have these beets. I have these golden beets too. Just going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil. Mix these up. Like I said, I want different textures. I want different flavors. So you have a soft texture, you have a roasted texture. And one thing about the beets, please do not boil your beets. We do not boil beets in 2020. You roast beets. Why do you roast beets? Because you get all the nutrients from them. Yeah? Nice and colorful. So we have that color right there, which is red. We have our gold. Let's do a little play on it. Musical chairs or musical beats, or however you want to call it. Then, of course, we have our goat cheese. Fresh goat cheese. And don't forget, we have our pickled, pe our pickled peaches. Listen, I told you this wasn't the regular. This looks delicious. I told you this was not your regular beet salad. Can't wait to try it. So we have our peaches here. I think I've gone a little bit past my time, but hey, who cares? We're cooking healthy. We're cooking to live. And you know what else? We're cooking to learn. And enjoy. And enjoy. So you have your salad right there. Now, like I said, this is fresh beet salad. So these are the top of your beets. And we have a little bit of kale. And not only do we have that, which will be a lot of crunch to it, we have our granola. So this is what our granola looks like. So you can cut it any way you like. I think I'm gonna just, since it's still crumbly, I think I'll just crumble it up. Still needs to dry a little bit, but it's nice and crunchy. Put that here, put that there. So you have so many different textures. Once again, this is Jeff. Anyone can cook. Simple things. Simple, simple, simple. Thank you for joining us. We gotta show this plate first before you sign out. Before I sign out, I'm gonna give you a little bit more light over here. Once again, we have our summer succotash salad. We have our roasted beet salad, goat cheese, pickled peaches, homemade granola, summer succotash with king trumpets. Man, this has so many different flavors. Hey, anyone can cook. You can do this. I can do this. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to Jeff the Chef. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on YouTube. And hey, tune in next week. Same, same, same time, same place. I'm hungry. I'm sweating. Let's eat. Let's eat. Thank you for joining us.